which leaders around the world do you see falling into that category? Well, let me just say some of the countries that I talk about, and I will, also have elements of fascism. I think, frankly, the only country I've just flat out said is fascist is North Korea because there is complete control. Uh, there is fear that has been instilled. Um, there is a uh, family that controls everything, the, the Kim family. They also practice uh, a way of treating their people where they have put them in, in labor camps. And this dedication to a leader um, that is almost, uh, you know, that they think they're godlike. So that is the only country that I just flat out say is fascist. The countries that I talk about that trouble me a great deal are um, what is going on in Hungary, and there was just an election there, a sham election, um, and then Poland, Turkey, uh, and Venezuela are the countries that I spend, and then the Philippines. Um, and those are countries where the leaders have, again, undermined any system of freedom and democracy uh, and see themselves as the the answer to everybody's problems. What I find really appalling, however, that those countries, all those people actually got elected. So why do you believe those countries and the people within them are so vulnerable to that kind of approach now? Well, I do think, and it's a little bit different in each one of them, but I think that um, especially the countries in uh, Poland and Hungary, um, in Central and Eastern Europe, there are historic aspects to this. And this is the 100th anniversary of the end of World War I. And those countries, basically Poland had existed but had been partitioned many times. Hungary had been one of the leaders of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, but all of a sudden they were independent. And they treasure their independence and their nationalism. What I think is interesting is because they feel that they hadn't been able to recover from all the aspects of communism, they there are people in the, both those countries that feel that they haven't gotten enough of the economic pie, that they have not been really able to live a good so-called Western life. Uh, and they are looking for some easy answers. And in Hungary's case, what makes it even more complicated, they are, this is very anti-immigrant. And so Viktor Orban has made very clear that all the problems that exist in Hungary have to do with migrants. And so there is this hyper-nationalism, that's one part of it, a sense that they have not been able to make the strides they wanted to in the post-communist world, and leaders who are willing and capable of mobilizing negative feelings on behalf of their own power structure and supporting their power. Would you say that in this country there are elements of exactly those same characteristics going on? Well, I do think that every country has divisions. There's no question. And the question is, how are they handled by the leaders? And so, you know, I'm, I'm an immigrant, a refugee. And when we came to the United States in 1948, 49, and we lived in Denver in the 50s, it was such a middle-class country to us and very different from some of the divisions that we had seen in Europe. And, uh, and maybe... There have always been divisions, but it was very clear recently that maybe as a result of new technology, people were losing their jobs. Um, there also was something that I'd never seen before, the 1% that really had everything and then everybody else. And so I do see the division. So then what happens is I think, again, uh, there are those who have wanted to exacerbate those decision uh, divisions. And then also, I think there has been a sense, uh, and President Trump has really encouraged this even more, is that we're being taken advantage of by the world. And so yeah, I'm very, a very proud American. Patriotism is one thing. Hypernationalism is dangerous. And that is what the America first part of things uh, the whole talking about that everybody, ha that we're a victim, which is ridiculous. This country is the most powerful country in the world. So I do think there are elements of that. 
And the part about fascism that I find so different than just authoritarian dictatorship is that there is this kind of rising from the bottom of people that are unhappy for one reason or another, and then a charlatan demagogic leader who then can take advantage of what's coming from the bottom and making it even worse and blaming somebody else. So there are elements of that in this country at the moment that does worry me that we are, quote, victims and then blaming immigrants uh, all of a sudden, uh, all these people coming in that are either taking jobs or are terrorists or are raping people. Do you believe that Donald Trump is a charlatan and demagogic leader? I think he is a demagogic leader. And by the way, I actually think that he's brilliant at it. He knows exactly how to plug in in terms of making people angry at somebody and finding people to blame for this. And then he also, uh, while many of us don't like the fact that he has such a limited vocabulary, it is one that, in fact, gets people kind of thinking that he's that he doesn't change his mind that this is what he does this is this is how he is and that he does have a better idea for this country and so i think that he he i think he is uh, a demagogue